Hey Level Up ladies, it's yours truly Joshi and welcome to the Level Up Podcast where I help aspiring young females level up to the boss they High always dream to be. you from low quality experiences and that's how Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> that man for the streets, okay? <laughs> Either you're gonna boss up or stand down, move forward or stay stuck, no failures, just lessons, the level up does not stop based on how you feel, sweetheart. Good day, everybody. Welcome back to another episode on the Level Up with Joshia podcast with your host, Joshia, which is Ma. And I am so happy to like be speaking to you guys this week because I, I found the most interesting topic to speak about. Now, I had already pre-recorded an episode for this week, right? I decided not to because I found something that I feel is worth speaking on and we should deal with it very early on in the new year. Even though it's been like about, what, 18 days or 17 days, I'm not sure, into the new year, I barely look at the calendar anymore, right? So, with that being said, I want to talk about glamorizing toxic relationships and you know what? Even though we speak on not glamorizing toxic relationships, the fact still remains that we still do it. Like, we still idolize very toxic men. We idolize toxic relationships that are portrayed on social media. And you know what? It's almost like we are living in a fantasy world. Like, we are living in a world where relationships and friendships are not as strong as they're supposed to be and i don't know why i don't know why like i said i just like a few days ago i went through like a scenario right not even a scenario this is an actual event where a friend broke my trust i went through that and i didn't understand it for the life of me because i wouldn't have done it to them but it happened and then it made me think about what is the foundation or the principles that we based our relationships on and that's men and women alike and I just feel as if like I was now I'm not really a big social media person I only post when I'm doing something that I feel is interesting to you all to observe or when I'm posting my content right? Something that can be educational or informative or just a FYI. And one of the stories that were circulating around last week was about Ari, you know, Ari and Ari can say, if you don't know who Ari is, her perspective on relationships and what she, what she feels is the best way for relationships to go right but however although they are attacking they're they're attacking Ari for what she said initially if you would have continued to listen to the interview she did clarify that she does feel like she has matured since she has met her current partner right now I'm not one to judge because I know all females have some type of toxic trait that they love whether that's in themselves or in men, we all are guilty of glamorizing toxic. Toxic is sending your paragraph and then deciding to block him. Um, being in a relationship and you haven't blocked on all your social medias. Um, pretending to fake walk out when you want him to run behind you. It's just, I'm not going to text her first because I don't want her to think that I'm desperate. I don't want her to think that I'm thirsty. Whatever you guys want to call it. And then the the one that is up for me in debate right now is that masculine woman versus the feminine woman or the alpha versus the beta or whatever, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, whatever it is that floats your boat. I just feel we have made everything so friggin' hard. Like we have made everything hard when it's just very simple. It's very simple. Now, for some strange reason, when it comes to like glamorizing toxic relationships, I can tell you guys something. And you can believe me or not, most of the toxic relationships that we glamorize as women, 
involves a man that has a very distinct amount of money, which puts us in a whole different tax bracket to even say that we're going to put up with anything that that man has to deal with. Now, let me tell you something. And like they said, you know, you rather cry in a Honda or you rather cry in a Rolls Royce. But sweetheart, let me tell you this. I rather cry in a Honda with my dignity after I walk out of a man's life that does not care for me than for me to cry in my Rolls Royce for a few days for me to go back to a man because I like the things that he can do for me. Okay. Honestly, I just feel like women right now, we're in this strange paradox, right? Where it's be super independent and you know, masculine and do everything on your own or just be a gold again. Take what you can from these men. Like, I honestly feel that is the strange paradox that we are in right now in our generation when it comes to love. And that's kind of sad because the balance which is in the middle, which is normal love, the love that Christ talked about, the love that is explained. If you, the definition to love, right? The definition of love is very simple. We make love to be everything else but what it actually is. Why do we do that? That's just humans. We love to misconstrued the basics of what Christ has given us in order for us to lead and live a, a life that it's free of the BS, right? But we we decide, you know, we decide that we're just going to do what we want to do. And I can tell you something. When we look for the definition of love, love is very, very simple. Like, you know what? Love is so simple to break down, right? That when you read the Bible and you go to the book of Corinthians, right? The book of Corinthians literally gives you love, not in sentences. You know, they, they use love was described using adjectives that are black and white, right? It wasn't using anything. It like love was very clear and delivered to us in the Bible on what we should expect from love. Without any metaphors, without any juxtapositions, without any similes, without any type of confusion. Very straightforward. Very straightforward what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Something that we all females are very famous for. I myself, I keep record of wrongs. Like I stash them in my back pocket. So when row day come, like I'm coming for you. But that's not healthy. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with truth. Love is honest. Somebody is somebody's going to continuously lie to you, continuously cheat on you. That's not love. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always persevere right when and you know what i feel like we get this perseverance part mixed up perseverance is not exactly suffering okay persevering with you is when things happen that was beyond our control and i'm gonna stand by you with it perseverance does not include things that you could have controlled which is your dick or which is your lustful thoughts to go and commit any type of infidelities, that's con- that's controllable. But things as if suddenly becoming sick or suddenly like experience some type of financial, you know, strain or whatever, like things like that, you know, that's where the perseverance comes in, where I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be there with you, right? But honestly and truly, I have come to the conclusion that our generation just don't understand love. And you know where it messed up? It messed up from the foundation that we watch our parents build. I'm I'm just going to say it. I know people are going to get mad. And it doesn't matter because you could have come from a two-parent household and it was still toxic in the house. Like, I've witnessed being in the type of industry I was in with my career, right? 
I noticed that families would travel together every Christmas. They are still married, right? But the husband and wife sleeps in two separate rooms. But they made it a, a contractual agreement that I'm going to come and we're going to travel and we're going to have Christmas dinner, but we're not going to separate, although you are already moved on with your life. And I've already moved on with mine, right? Prime example with Kanye and Kim living two very separate lives, probably still trying to figure out and navigate should they be together or not. But they're not legally separated. They haven't made that leap of faith to say legally separate. And I hope they do just for the betterment of both of them, right? And the foundation that I saw my parents build, and you know what? Not knocking them. They only can do the best that they could or they only could do the best of what they like could work with at the time, right? And probably there was nobody to teach them love. And watching that foundation, first of all, my parents' marriage failed. I have no recollection of my parents being together. None whatsoever. I don't know if my parents were... I don't remember. I absolutely don't remember. My parents were married but divorced by the time I knew myself. You know? Um, then I, Then my parents then moved on into various relationships. Some worked out. Some didn't. But I still did not understand what is love. You understand? And I'm still trying to understand that to this day. But the first thing that you're going to have to do if you're going to stop idolizing toxic, the only way you are going to stop idolizing toxic relationships or whatever is you're going to have to disconnect from this make-believe imaginary world that you have on social media. That's one of the main principles because you can't heal from trauma if you just keep involving yourself in trauma and involving yourself in whatever these people think love is. After you have done that therapy, therapy, a lot of us need therapy, myself included. You understand? A lot of us have to like, just start over. Start over and learn love for yourself. Don't learn love on what you see. Don't learn love on what you hear. Learn love on what you know. And any time that you have to question love, it's probably not love. And any time that you're in some type of confusion about what is love, Go back to what the definition of love is in the Bible. The Bible is the book to teach you how to live. It's not a book to condemn you. It's a book to correct you. It's a book to tell you, if you do it this way, this will happen. If you don't do it that way, that will happen. And I am just, I am on a quest this year. I am on a quest this year to learn the basics of everything in my life. To learn freedom, to learn what is peace, to learn what is patience, to learn what is love, what is self-care. I am learning that over again. I feel as if that when I woke up at 25, I woke the hell up and I was just like, I'm happy. Yes, I woke up and I was like, I'm happy. I'm about to change everything. I'm about to change what, what was taught to me. One of the things that I'm trying to learn now, I'm trying to unlearn the culture of having to work for somebody like that's a mentality that was beat into me because most of the times, like I say, the foundation, you watch your parents work endlessly, tired, like tirelessly, like you watch them work and you think like that's normal. They, everybody has equated that you have to finish school. You have to go to college. You have to find a job. And then if you don't do that, you need to go work for government. That's what it is in my country. You need to go work for government. And then, you know, because you're trying to keep up with the lifestyle, then you try to find another higher paid job, which is probably the hospitality um area in my country. And, you know, you realize that you probably don't even want to do that. Let me tell you something. I have met some of the most effed up people working in hospitality, a, a whole, a whole type of like different people like hospitality have some of the most unhospitable, I don't even know if that's a word, people that I've ever met, period. And honestly and truly, when you decide to learn everything that you felt was correct at some point in your life, you get shocked. It's almost like, I don't even want to say it's like, it's like a self-shock, right? 
where you be like, wow, I used to look at it from this perspective, but then let me look at it from that perspective. The same thing with love. I, in my mind, I had love as it's never supposed to be easy. It isn't supposed to be peace. It isn't supposed to be any of those things. Like you're supposed to go through X, Y, and Z. That was my perception of love because that's what I saw around me when it came to love. The same thing that I had with my my whole career and life choices about working. I thought you have to work for people to be successful. I I thought freedom is unobtainable. Like you have to work until you're 50 or 60. You understand? I thought it wasn't, you know, it's it's weird to only have two to three good friends and you don't want anybody else around you. I thought that was weird, but that's normal. You understand? I thought that the life that society says is for the vast majority of like 90% of us is the correct way where you're aimlessly in a rat race with everybody for the next best thing. I thought happiness was unattainable because if you really listen to the world, the news, people, society, people that do you wrong, you would never feel like there's some sense of happiness in life. Okay. And that's the same thing with toxic love and relationships. Like we got to really reprogram ourselves to figure out what the frig is love. You don't even have to reprogram yourself to think what is love. You just have to start acting it. You have to act it out. Like, what's the sense of knowing something if you're not going to practice it? So you're going to have to start practicing love. You're going to have to start practicing love by being patient with people, by not being easily angered, by not um, by not exuding any jealousy when somebody is succeeding. You're going to have to be, you know, slow to wrath. You're going to have to be all of those stuff. You're going to have, you know, not dishonoring people. Like, you're going to have to figure out how... To portray love in order to get away from the toxic narrative of love. And when you start to do that, you're going to be happier. You're going to be happier and you're going to make better decisions. So with that being said, that ends my segment on toxic relationships and love. And then we're going to talk about friendships on the next episode. Because guess what? Friendships and all operate in a way based on our foundation about love. And about why we care for people and we treat people the way that we treat them. I had a self-shock when I realized, sweetheart, not everybody in this world aspire to be better humans. I had I I thought everybody was out here on the same grind and on the same run. Like I thought everybody was out here trying to be better. No. You have people out there that because you're trying to find pure love, they will try to sleep with your husband or your boyfriend because they don't want you to experience that. There are just people out there like that. You have people where you want to be like self-sufficient in your career or in your business and they will bring it down and they will talk bad about it because, you know, they just don't want you to reach there because they felt like they couldn't do it, you know. There are people out there like that. And that that's the main thing I'm trying to wrap my head around. Because I'm always seeing the better good in people. But you got to learn that not everybody on the same quality of life as you. And some people enjoy being in toxicity. Some people enjoy not aspiring to be anything more. People, people some people like disappointment. It, it's sad but true. And that's why... On this quest that I'm on, I will cancel out the whole world before the world can cancel me. Like, I will leave toxic before toxic takes over me. I will leave the untrust, the un, you know, the untrustworthy friend before they can, you know, do some foul things to me. I will walk away from the career that. I count down the hours on when I'm going to leave the place. I'm going to walk away from anything this year that doesn't serve me because the only thing that's guaranteed for me to serve in this life is God. Okay. So see you guys on another episode on the Level Up With Your Shield podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to send me your comments and any suggestions 
on my Instagram page, which is becoming Jojo. So if you're interested in me talking about something, elaborating on something, you need clarity on something, send me your suggestions and I'll be more than happy to speak on them. See you guys on the next episode. Bye.